here. Hey, Frank. Thanks for filling up the dumpster. <laughs> I wish that was all I was doing here. I'm trying to stay out of sight. Looks like Morgan will be at the post office all day. Listen up. Jack and I cooked up a little plan. I'm sure Morgan will be gone soon. But I gotta get out of here now. You haven't seen me. Ob er da immer noch hinter dem Mülleimer hockt? Oder wie ist er da jetzt weggekommen? Gut, er meinte ja, dass dieser nette Herr drinnen warten würde. Wir schauen mal, ob er da ist. Tatsächlich. Da sitzt er rum. Mal sehen, ob mit ihm zu reden ist. Be careful on the road today, Mr. Weiss. Health truck damage is costly. Das ist deine Sorge. Tatsächlich. Na gut. Wer belädt eigentlich mein Fahrzeug? Macht das Frank? Gut. Was müssen wir für eine Runde fahren? Hm. Ich glaube, ich fahre erstmal die beiden an, dann hier rum, dann hier wieder zurück. Hm. Das wird ein großer Spaß. Hi, Jack. KNW 6 TV Crews filming in PO yesterday with Connor Bryce. As a big fan, I just had to ask him for an autograph. He asked me for my name, but he kept calling me Linda. There we go. So, den ersten Brief hätten wir schon mal ausgeliefert. Dann fahren wir mal just hier rum. Bert's out of town for the holidays. But he did ask me to keep an eye on his place. Na, wer schleicht sich denn hier wohl rum? Natürlich, das Kamerateam. Ob es okay ist, wenn ich da okay, are we rolling? hingehe? We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay, let's get this in one. I'm freezing my ass off. <coughs> when Chekhov saw the long winter, he saw a winter bleak and dark and bereft of hope. Yet we know that winter is just another step in the cycle of life. In the summer months, this lake is bustling with activity. As the local fishermen cast their rods, the tourists plunk down hard-earned cash to rent a boat ich hoffe, wir stören and spend gleich a delightful die Aufnahme nicht. day on the water. Not so during this particularly harsh winter, however. Now the watery heart of Providence Ist da gerade ein Vogel durch die Eisfläche? Oh, schon wieder. No, uh, that won't do as an analogy because now we're sort of implying the residents have grown cold-hearted during the winter. Doesn't work, doesn't scan. Yeah, and um, what was with that Chekhov stuff? I don't get it. Chekhov? Like from Star Trek? All right, all right. Let's try something else. Wait, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Postman. How's it going? Oh, don't mind me. I wouldn't want to interrupt. Uh huh. Hey, listen, how about I ask you a couple of questions on camera? Just simple stuff about the town. Sure, I'd be happy to. Great. Just uh, move over here. Are we both in the shot? Yeah, that's fine. 
This will be great. The lake is a backdrop. Perfect. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. This is... His name is Thomas Weiss. I knew that. Thomas and I go way back. <clears throat> As the local mailman for truly countless years, Thomas Weiss knows Providence Oaks like he knows the back of his own hand. So, Mr. Weiss, how would you characterize this small, cold town and its warm, warm inhabitants? That's easy, Connor. In the eons I've been the local mailman, I've learned one thing. Providence Oaks... ...cannot be summed up in a single soundbite. But one thing's for certain. Anyone who's ever seen the views from atop the mighty watchtower knows. Providence Oaks is breathtaking. And wherever you are, or whatever you face... Here, a goodbye never has to be a farewell. And cut! Ah, oh, that's so sweet, Thomas Weiss. Completely unusable. But sweet! I know I've got goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, that went well, kind of. Now, let's scout out the establishing shots at the far end of the pier. Let's go, Connor. Aye, aye, Captain. Gabe, you can take five. My advice would be to take those five in the van, to reduce the risk of any further ass-freezing-off incidents. Noted. Thanks, Elsa. Also, ich fand unsere Ansprache großartig. Und besser als alles, was dieser Herr von diesem Fernsehsender jemals rausgebracht hat. Ich weiß gar nicht, was er hat. Und jetzt muss ich mich wahrscheinlich auch noch mal hier mit diesem Menschen auseinandersetzen. Mr. Weiss, uh, Thomas, Sir. Hi, Gabriel. What's up? Just that, well, we'll be ringing in the new year right here in Providence Oaks. So, my mom is shipping over my tuxedo. <laughs> Can you make sure it arrives okay? She says she clearly marked the package Serrano Room 2. Oh, of course. Mailman's promise. So, how did you and Ilsa like the movie? Oh man, it was beautiful. Heavy stuff, though. At the end, Ilsa totally had tears in her eyes. And, well, so did I. <laughs> There is something else I wanted to ask you about. I guess I'm curious. How did you, like, woo your wife? Uh, it's pretty simple and cliched. Uh, she's my high school sweetheart. I took her to the fairy tale dance. We snuck off to smooch under the bleachers, and the rest is ancient history. But I'm guessing that doesn't help you with what you really want to know. And that's none of my business. It's between you and Ilsa. Shh, keep it down. Don't mention her name. <laughs> But yeah terrible at that kind of stuff. It's just, you seem like a wise man, wise man. <laughs> I'd really appreciate your advice. Well, okay then. My advice is to go for it. You like her a lot, and it's pretty obvious that the feeling's mutual. Wow. And is that your definitive judgment? Absolutely. That's the best I can do. All done. Hey, what are you two schmoozing about? Uh, 
Oh, we were discussing the delivery of Gabriel's New Year's Eve attire. Excellent. Now start the engine, Gabriel. We're rolling out pronto. Man alive, it's cold today. On it, Mr. Price. Thanks, Thomas. You've been a huge help. So, take good care of that tux, yeah? Will do. Bye, folks. Und zack, weg sind sie. Und ich muss schon wieder ein Päckchen hier zum Diner bringen. <lacht> Eigentlich dachte ich, ich würde wieder zur verlassenen Hütte fahren, in der hier unser Frank seine Raketen versteckt. Achso, ja, ich sollte das Päckchen mitnehmen. Absolut richtig. Ich hätte es ja irgendwie schöner gefunden, wenn ich dann komplett planlos an der Theke stehe und gefragt werde, was ich denn möchte. Und mit dann okay. einfällt, ach ja, hm. das Päckchen natürlich. Naja. Oh, da steht jemand an der Theke. Die Dame kenne ich noch gar nicht. Hi there, ladies. Hi, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Well, this looks cozy. It is. You just dropped in at the good part. That's for you to say, and me to find out. Well, I actually really need to get moving with the New Year's party coming up. Okay, so before I leave, we had this awesome girls' night yesterday thanks to Beth. It was hilarious! When I first saw where we were going, my brain went, oh my god. And when the guy showed us what we were going to do, my brain went, oh my god! And when we started, it was so yuck, but also so... Cool, you know? I've never done anything like that before and I love that I got a chance to find out. Wovon spricht sie? But then again, I doubt that I will ever try it again. <laughs> ah, yes, the girls night. What did you end up doing? We made haggis. You made what is? I said haggis. It's a Scottish dish made from a sheep's liver, lungs, heart, and suet, all stuffed into a sheep's stomach. It's this fascinating traditional gourmet staple stemming from the 15th century. Would you believe? Poems have been written about it. Ich find's immer noch merkwürdig, dass die Leute hier so stur gerade ausgucken und nicht zu essen haben. Oder jemanden zum Reden oder sonst irgendwas. That sounds disgusting. I'm glad we mostly had processed foods at poker night. Well, I say, Thomas, don't be a Philistine. <lacht> It was so gross. I have nightmares about zombie sheep for weeks. Bleh. Okay, hate to leave you two, but I really have to sort out this delivery ASAP. A Marine will go bananas. Talk soon. Thanks again for the great evening, Beth. Bye. Bye, Kay. Well, now, I really should get back to the grind as well. Those New Year's price reductions aren't going to fix themselves. Uh, hold on, Beth. Quick word about Saturday. Oh? What's on your mind? Is everything okay? Yes, I'm fine. Don't you worry about me, Thomas. I'm fit as a fiddle. Now, if that's all, I really need to get back to the bookstore. Beth, come on. You have been acting a bit strange lately. What do you mean? Standing outside in the cold with a parcel like that? It feels off to me. Okay, you've got me. Can we sit down here for a bit? Heavens, I do feel a bit caught out. But I have to admit, it does warm my heart to know that I cannot fool my friends. 
Well, out with it, Beth. You see, it's my eyes, Thomas. I have glaucoma, which means my optic nerve is deteriorating. I found out a few months ago. Oh, no. Have you told anyone about it? I haven't told Emily yet. Daniel knows. It's not that bad yet, but it's not getting any better either. The thing is, this kind of condition happens slowly. And I haven't been the fastest in getting it treated, but they can stabilize it. That's why I wasn't able to fix the parcel on my own last Saturday. And that's why I'm starting to miss a few details here and there when I'm in the store. Or asking for peas instead of beans at Christmas dinner with all of my friends of all places. I had no idea. Is there anything we can do to help? It's sweet of you, but there is no need to treat me any differently. I've been going about my business as usual, first and foremost, because the deterioration is so gradual. Until I couldn't really do the little things anymore. Things like reading small print are getting difficult. Which was a painful thing to accept at first. Working in the bookstore is starting to give me more issues than I'd like. Getting older. It's a strange thing, isn't it? It's like that Robert Frost poem. The afternoon knows what the morning never suspected. Doesn't mean I wouldn't mind taking a little nap in between from time to time, though. Is this why you're really leaving for Georgia? I mean, will you be able to take care of yourself in the long run? It is a big part of why I'm leaving, yes. But at the same time, it isn't. Beth, you're a great gal, but... Sometimes you're just a bit too cryptic for me. What I'm trying to say is, when you really look at it, in the end, it's not all bad. You see, every limit is a beginning as well as an ending, as T.S. Eliot puts it. For me, there's really no use dwelling too much on that limit. I can't change it anymore at this point anyway. But I do have a choice in how to deal with it. Plus, Georgia has a lot to offer museums, social clubs, and most importantly, my family. If you look at it like that, getting older may still feel like a cursed time, surely, but I also see each new year as a gift. An opportunity to start new adventures, explore, and have more fun. You can't take something like that for granted. I feel a quote coming on. As soon as you feel too old to do a thing, do it. As Margaret Deland said. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> well, I guess I really should be going now. Thank you once again, Thomas. I do feel better now that it's out. You're a good friend. No, thank you, Beth. Bye now. Ja, das hatte ich jetzt nicht erwartet. Machen wir uns trotz der Geschichte mal auf den Weg, die letzten Päckchen zu verteilen. Gut, an sich können wir jetzt einfach den... Weg hier runterfahren und erstmal die weiteren Pakete in der Innenstadt ausfahren. Hupala, da bin ich doch glatt einmal falsch abgebogen.
Hm. Da sind wir glatt nicht weit genug gefahren. Mann, Mann, Mann. See handwriting on this one. <lacht> so, das letzte Päckchen für heute. Dann müssen wir danach nur noch Post ausliefern. Interessant. They must be out of town for the holidays. Gills got such a great price on this house when the Sugarmans moved away. Gut, es bleiben noch zwei Briefe, die da irgendwo in der Vorstadt verteilt werden wollen. habe ich glatt den Zaun angefahren. Oh, ein süßes Kätzchen. Oh, Thomas, hello there. Could you be a sweetheart and bring that over to me? Uh, of course. Oh, careful now. Robert cleared most of the snow, but it's still a bit slippery. Thank you so much. If only I still had the balance and agility of my feline friends. Oh, and good day to you, of course. Well, if it isn't... Uh, uh, Mortimer, right? Right you are, Thomas. You're Mortimer's favorite male man. Well, the feeling's mutual. You're my favorite cat, Mort. Immer. Right, Mortimer. So, what do you have for me today, Thomas? Just a letter. Let's see. Hmm, this sounds interesting. Apparently. I need to make a few copies of this letter, and <laughs> if you send this letter along with five dollars to the first six people on this list, your name will be added to the bottom. Soon enough, your name will rise to the top. Then many people will send you 
Five dollars. You will earn lots of money with one small investment. Oh, what a great idea. What do you think, Mortimer? Maybe you should talk this over with your son rather than your cat. Before committing 30 bucks, I'm certain he'll advise against it. Are you sure, Thomas? They make it sound so easy. They always do. But there's no such thing as a free lunch, sadly. Hmm. Thirty dollars is quite a bit of money. I'll think about it. You do that, Mildred. See you at Moe's tomorrow night? Probably. Bye, dear. Da haben wir die Dame ja gerade davon abbringen können, Geld aus dem Fenster zu schmeißen. Wir sollten für solche guten Tipps Provision verlangen. Dumm, die dumm, die dumm, die dumm. That's it for today. Back to the post office. Wo führt denn der Weg hin? Ach so, hier einmal so rum. Beer Creek. Okay, ich glaube, da war ich noch nicht. Wer stellt denn da einen Hydranten hin? So, Feierabend. Hey Thomas, have you seen Jack? Yep, yesterday night in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, okay, but I kind of need him now. I'm a sitting duck right now. I'm toast if Morgan suddenly shows up. Now, don't worry, Morgan has probably left PO already. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Sorry for interrupting your conversation. Mr. Coleman, I see you've managed to be present at the job position you're currently holding. I think it's time you and I had a little chat inside the office. Mr. Morgan, it's so good to see you again. A little chat sounds uh, wonderful. But I'm afraid there's an extremely urgent parcel I have to deliver right now. So stay put and I'll be back in about 30 minutes. You can stay right here, Frank. I'm sure Mr. Weiss would be happy to deliver that package for you. Right, Thomas? Um... I've got a better idea. Let's just go to Moe's, have a few beers, and talk it all over like adults. <clears throat> uh, uh, excuse me, sir? Hi. Hello. I, I heard you were looking for a guy in a light blue shirt with a mustache. To purchase <laughs> illegal fireworks in the parking the lot of the post office? Well, you found them. Illegal fireworks? Who do you think I am? Sir, you don't have to keep your guard up. Frank and Thomas here both know me very well, and I'm sure they won't tell a soul about what you're doing right now. So, 
What will it be? I've got rockets, Roman candles, fountains, sparklers. I even have barrages that'll give you a fireworks extravaganza that you won't ever forget. I think there must be a misunderstanding here. Please, don't put Mr. Morgan in this position. If people walk by and see this, they, they might snitch on him and get him into trouble. He could even lose his job over this. I don't think Mr. Morgan is interested in buying fireworks, to be honest. I'll tell you what will happen now. I'm going to get in my car, start the engine, drive home, and pretend I did not just spend three days in Providence Oaks for absolutely nothing. Sir, if you take a left at the deer statue, you'll eventually pass my barn, and I can feel your trunk there in just one minute. Do you have cash on hand? Gentlemen, I'll be back next year. Frank Coleman, your luck will run out one day. I wouldn't bet on it. Tally-ho, Morgan! Is Morgan really going to believe Jack was the one offering fireworks? That mustache wasn't very convincing. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We turned up the heat on him and he chickened out. Thanks, guys. I owe you one. Hello? Evening, Thomas. It's Maureen. Oh, hi, Maureen. If you're looking for Emily, she's at the motel right now. I, I was actually looking for you, Thomas. I, I don't know what to do with this Nancy situation. I get so worked up just thinking about it. And that usually gets in the way of doing the right thing, you know? I need to talk to someone who's a bit more emotionally detached from the situation. Hmm. How can I help you, Maureen? Simply put, I don't know if I should give in to that Nancy Carlyle and her overpriced snacks, or tell that woman to take a hike. But then we'll end up with a lackluster New Year's Eve party. A party is about having a good time with people you like. Who cares if the snacks aren't great? That's what I'd like to think as well. But I just don't like to disappoint people. It may not be the perfect party, but people will understand that you had to draw a line in the sand. Hmm. I think you're on to something there, Thomas. I'm not yet totally sure what I'm gonna do, but at least my mind's at ease now. Thanks for lending me your ear and advice. You're a doll. You're welcome, Maureen. Take it easy. Na, endlich mal wieder ein ruhiger Abend, an dem wir uns mit unserem liebgewonnenen Buch beschäftigen können. The 26th president of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt, regularly staged boxing matches in the White House and took on anyone he could, including professional boxers. In 1888, a pigeon fancier and a beekeeper challenged each other's creatures to a 3.5 mile race organized in Germany. The bee won by 25 seconds. Und mit diesen Fakten aus Welt des Sports Verabschiede ich mich. Vielen Dank fürs Zusehen, fürs Zuhören. Macht's gut. Bis bald. Tschüss.